On your Friday episode of Locked On Raptors, we continue a grand tradition on the show where I like to bring on hilarious Toronto stand-up comics to talk about their Raptors fandom, and we do it with the wonderful Andrew Ivamy coming up on today's show. We'll get into his Raptors fan origins. We'll play a game of that random Raptors game and so much more. Thanks so much for hanging. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Raptors, your daily Toronto Raptors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on and welcome to another episode of Locked On Raptors, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Friday, August the 4th, and I'm your host, Sean Woodley. I've been covering the Toronto Raptors now for nine seasons on various platforms. You can follow my work over on Twitter at Woodley Sean. You can follow the show on Instagram at Locked On Raptors, and of course, come hang out in our lovely little Discord server we got. We got nearly 200 sickos just like you hanging out, talking ball, talking movies. It's a pleasant place to come and talk about the Raptors with friends on the internet, which is really all we're searching for, right? Come hang out. It's a great time. Link in the description if you need the link at any point just shoot me a dm i can always give you that sweet sweet invite code as well all right on today's show we are digging into a lovely little chat with andrew ivamy who is a hilarious stand-up comic based in toronto who i saw a couple weeks back uh open for ian carmel and he was just outstanding really really a ton of fun and uh we wanted to bring andrew on the show he's a raptors fan he's a big hoop head and we get into his raptors fandom his origins as a fan why the we the north era meant so much to him and kind of got him back into caring about the raptors it's a lovely time and we will get to it now we also play around to that random raptors game at the end a little bit of a technical issue in the back part of the show you'll notice Notice that I randomly am wearing headphones all of a sudden at some point. It's okay. No worries. We just had to do a little work around. Uh, it should be more than listenable and watchable. But uh, just a heads up if there are any weird glitches. We had some Wi-Fi troubles the night we recorded this. Either way, it's a lot of fun. I really hope you enjoy it. And I really appreciate you for tuning in making the, the show your first listen every day all week long of course three days a week right now uh we'll be back again next week with more we got more what's more likely on tap we're going to play hoop grids with james herbert next week in a fun raptors devised version of it it's going to be a blast all that's coming up but right now coming up is the conversation with andrew ivamy the wonderful toronto stand-up comic who joined me for today's show let's get to it all right, joining me now on Locked on Raptors is a wonderful, hilarious stand-up comic podcaster, man about town, uh, who I happened to uh, catch before Ian Carmel's show a couple weeks ago at Comedy Bar, and I was absolutely enraptured because he's very, very funny. And I also noticed from his socials that he is a Toronto Raptors fan. Perfect! I love stand-up comedy, and I love getting funny stand-up comics on the podcast to talk about the Toronto Raptors if, in fact, they are Toronto Raptors fans please welcome in andrew ivamy that was a very very long intro but uh, how's hey, it going man thanks for joining I, the show <laughs> i love the intro you hit all the clean points you know that that's a who what when where why you got how you <laughs> met me why you met me what the what i do you really hit everything you know you saw me on the ian carmel show and you were like this guy is so good we've got to get him on the show during the off season we got to give him the hot time <laughs> slot you came at me and you were like, Andrew, playoff time. Can you come on the show? I was like, no, no, no. I want that off season time slot. That's what I want. I People like, don't I, know. When I have guests on in the summer, it's focus grouping for when it really matters. So yeah. uh, perform well here and we'll see you in March, baby. Well, see, I like playing with a handicap. That's kind of my thing. I'm like swinging with a weighted bat over here. You put me in in the off season. I show you what I can do. <laughs> Uh, well, really happy to have you here, man. And we're going to do this sort of typical thing when I, I do when I get a very funny comic on the show. And we're just going to kind of go through the Raptors fan origin story of said comic. We'll also dig into a little of the uh, the season to come. Uh, you know, Andrew, I've noticed on his socials and just in my various small interactions with him, is an extremely uh, positive person, it seems. And I, those who listen to this show, will know that I have been a giant grump about the Raptors over the last month or 
so, which is very unlike me. This is typically a show where I'm like, everything's fine. It's all good. It's groovy, baby. We're going to watch some hoop and it's fine. Uh, but I've not loved the Raptors offseason. So you're going to pitch me on why it might actually, in fact, be good and or exciting. And so we'll get into that coming up later. And of course, we will bring you through the ritual that is that random Raptors game, a gauntlet that we throw at every guest on the show who uh, makes their first appearance. We'll get to that later. Explain the rules. Let's start, however, with your Raptors fan origins. How did you become a fan? I feel like a lot of people kind of come to it at various times for different reasons, and it's always interesting to kind of dig into what was that moment that kind of clicked. Oh, this is a thing I like. What was that moment for you? Uh, that moment for me was probably like 2015, 16 season, maybe. Okay. Uh, for the most part, like I grew up, uh, I grew up in Newfoundland, so I'm not a born and raised Torontonian, as not a lot of people are. Uh, <laughs> right? It's an adoptive home for a lot of people, but uh, I grew up in Newfoundland and was kind of like a basketball fan when I was younger, but was never really like I didn't move to Toronto until '03. And mm -hmm. at that time in my life, I was so busy. I wasn't a hardcore Raptors fan. I barely had time to watch a basketball game. Uh, they also notably uh, sucked at that time. So I yeah, yeah. So co <laughs> so things things worked out pretty smooth there for a little bit. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I was just like I was working. I was busy. I wasn't even really keeping up with basketball as much as I did when I was younger. And then I think it was around like the 15, 16 season. It was uh, just like a, a bar that I frequented was like, hey, we have season tickets. There's a couple games we Ooh. can't go to. Do you want to go? Uh, and I was like, hell yeah. I'd, you know, I'd love to go. I was like, I haven't really kept up with basketball in a few years. But just a, a, a kind gesture of a couple of free tickets in the, I think it was 15, 16 season was mm -hmm. kind of what got me back in. And then I would say since then, it just like that season was like, okay, I'm seeing a couple and immediately like, I'm going to buy tickets to a couple games. Okay. I'm <laughs> watching every game. Okay. Now I have everything that I need to watch every game. Okay. Now I'm watching the G league games. Uh, <laughs> so like, it's, it's, it's still pretty, it's still, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say that like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a bandwagoner, but I'm definitely like a newer Raptor fan in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, that's. I, I am interested in this because I feel like there are a lot of fans who kind of latched onto the team during that We the North era, right? Like 2014, yeah. 2015, and on from there when they become like a real franchise and stop doing the things that Brian Colangelo liked to do, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And I'm always fascinated to sort of like dig into what the championship did to that subset of the fan base's brain because I feel like for me like I, I you know this is it's not like a contest or anything i've been watching the raptors since like 99 2000 or whatever right yeah. and so like I, I remember those very dark lean years and those were yeah. just kind of the way it was and you accepted ah the raptors are the raptors are never going to win anything because they're the raptors and that's fine i still enjoy this thing right. but obviously it's really gratifying 20 years later when they finally do the thing and win the title after the buildup that was that we the north era and also all of the baggage and horrible things that came before that yeah for those who came on during the we the north era i'm curious like this is you find that there's like this expectation of the team just always being good because i feel like that's happened with some people people caught on in those years leading up and it's yeah. like oh they should just win the championship and win 60 games every single year what the hell right. is going on 41 win team whereas right. like a lot of folks who were like there for the dark years last season were like oh this is extremely normal this is fine this is actually good compared to the slop we used to consume when we were children um is there like a sort of there, there's got to be a bit of a different sort of but like the, the way in which the title impacted those two subsets of fans brains, I would think. I, I do think that both of those subsets exist for sure. What mm -hmm. you're describing are two different groups of people that uh, I would say I even like started watching the Raptors with and some of them mm -hmm. kind of faded out and some of them were weren't weren't fans of Raptors basketball, they were fans of TSN highlight basketball. And <laughs> there's a difference between the two, right? And it's like, and but also I don't want to be the person who 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 gatekeeps or says like what you can or can't or what the threshold for true fandom is but there for are sure people every who fan are... is a fan and that's just it like who cares it, yeah. exactly and it's like i've also always been like a very nerdy guy and in nerddom there's that too where it's like oh you're not a star wars fan unless you were an og or it's this <laughs> or that or like you can't just like the marvel movies if you didn't read the comic books it's like like what you like and everyone shut the hell up but there definitely were some people who fell by the wayside who were really more into just kind of like highlights and a high expectation and they fell out but then there are people like me 
who are just like, yeah, win or lose, I'm watching every game. I'm keeping an mm -hmm. eye on the G League. I'm watching Summer League. Like, there are people where it's like the hooks got in a little bit deeper and mm -hmm. kind of brought everything with it. But I, I do think that there is a large percentage of people who who definitely had a higher expectation was like, this high never ends. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, no, it it, it does. It does. There are, <laughs> there, are, there are lean times as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like I, like I said, last year, 41 and 41, it's like, how lean is that even really compared to the sort of depths we've seen in the past? You know, it wasn't the yeah. best. We'll, we'll get into that. It certainly wasn't awesome. I, what, what was your sort of thought of last season, right? Like so much excitement going in, 48 wins the year before. Scotty Barnes is everyone's favorite boy. Yeah. Uh, it, it just feels like it's on this sort of upward trend. And I think you know, probably justifiably looking back at the last 10 years of the franchise, the assumption is, oh, well, this is just the beginning of that next era where they never lose uh, right. and they're just really, really good and competitive every single year over and over again. And that seems to have hit a bit of a stumbling block. What was your sort of reckoning of last season? Like, did you find things to enjoy about it? Did you, oh, yeah. uh, did you wallow? Like, what, what was your sort of like the ups and downs of the 41 and 41 season? I'm not going to say there was no wallow. There was some wallow. <laughs> there was a touch of wallow that was going on, but there was still a lot of joy. Like it was, it was a true mixed bag and there was a range of emotions that were going on. And I think that like, there was still, I think there were more positives than negatives. I think there was a lot of potential in there. And then there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that just like never came to the surface at all, where it's like, we never saw, uh, uh, we never saw Otto get some time or get like, or really like be healthy and Poor get guy, some minutes. Man. So it's like, there's stuff like that. And it's just like, it's, and you know, like Gary had uh, like a mild injury. What was it? Ankle? I can't remember what Gary had, but that rings a bell. Yeah. Ankle, well, knee, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing about last season where it's just all these little things where I'm like, Gary is uh, like a, a rhythm three point shooter. And if you'll mm -hmm. look, you'll notice anytime he misses two games, it takes him nine games to get his rhythm back. So mm -hmm. I think also this that was like a down year for Gary. And I think we're going to see big leaps from Gary this year, you know, assuming knock on wood, he stays healthy and everything like that, because he's someone who is slow to get back to rhythm from mm -hmm. any time off whatsoever. So I think that there were like some downer things that are just kind of like, yeah, well, you know, like Otto's, Otto's injured. Gary takes a while to get back from injury for a minute. Boucher kind of lost his shot. Oh, he found it back. You know, Precious was streaky. A lot of things where it's like, if we can just get a little consistency from a lot of flashes of brilliance that we saw last year, just some consistency from that in the off season. And it's great. And then there's also some beautiful things from last year where it's like, Yak is back and his minutes on, it was such, it was such a positive effect on the court and on the team. Mm -hmm. And like, you see it and it's, I, I, I don't understand why he didn't get a few more minutes, especially from a team where it was like, we, you know, we were playing too many minutes for most good players. So why wasn't <laughs> Yak one of them? Uh, so I think that that changes a lot of things as well. So I think there's a lot to look forward to there. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's there's a lot that was kind of like, ooh, little flashes of things last season, followed by deep, deep bummers. Uh, but yeah. enough that like I'm feeling good toward going into next season, you know? What what was your experience of the play in game and the disaster that was losing to a shrieking nine year old? <laughs> that was a fever dream, wasn't it? <laughs> like, like that was <laughs> If you're going to lose a one-off game, I guess lose it like that so it's memorable, I suppose. Yeah, like, man. yeah, and like lose it to someone you like's child to a certain degree <laughs> where it's like you can't even be mad. I almost feel like that was a lifesaver because if that was a random kid, I'm like, I actually don't want to see what Toronto is like <laughs> if that was a random child and not a child of a legacy. Like uh, a child they could have within their like powers actually removed from the building but didn't yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely so i'm like i don't know if that's better or worse so there's a mixed bag there uh but yeah that definitely hurt it's it just things kind of like devolved and got worse as uh as things went on which was tough to see 
Yeah. Speaking of devolving and getting worse, uh, Fred Van Vliet left in the summer. We're going to talk about that and the fallout and the uh, sort of ramifications going into the new season as uh, we'll, we'll get your thoughts on the offseason so far. And again, we're going to try to have you cheer me up a little bit because I've been a grouch for the last month or so thinking about this team. And uh, I look forward to you uh, talking me back into the, uh, the sort of experience of it all in just a sec. We'll do that momentarily before we dive in there, however. Got to tell you about our friends over at Ibotta, the average Ibotta user earns $120 per year in cash back when they just do things that you're always going to do, like pick up groceries, go to the store to get burgers and hot dogs for the summer barbecue you're hosting, whatever it might be. If you're buying stuff that you would buy anyway, Ibotta will help you get cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods so you can make sure you're beating inflation and no matter what you're purchasing, either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. Again, 120 bucks is the average that an Ibotta user earns each year. That is enough to cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, or you could use your cash back to buy something a little special that you had your eye on, maybe a pair of Air Max or something like that. You can go and do that. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account or PayPal, gift cards, whatever it might be. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D, when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play and download the free Ibotta app and use the code LOCKED. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use the code LOCKED. All right, we continue on here. Andrew Ivamy, lovely Toronto stand-up comic here. Uh, as we talk now about the Raptors offseason to this point, so, it, it, look, man, I think probably covering it every single day adds to the sort of, you know, we mentioned wallowing earlier. I feel like that's oh, what yeah. I've been doing since Fred Van Vliet left. It's just like envisioning different ramifications, different like machinations of the team, how it's all going to come together. And I just, I keep on spinning my wheels and keep coming back to, man, they don't have anyone who can dribble and shoot and pass all at the same time anymore. This is a problem. Um, that said, I have been getting a little bit more intrigued by, um, you know, some of the sort of different lineup combinations they'll be able to throw at this season. The Scotty at point thing, we talked about it a lot on last week's episodes, you know, throughout the week. As much as I don't really agree that Scotty Barnes is a point guard, I think he's kind of a point playmaking forward type. Uh, they're going to do it, and we're going to see, and it's going to be, be interesting if center. nothing else. Yeah. Um, we'll see. But what was your sort of reaction to Fred leaving, first of all? Um, I, you know, the fan base, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the sort of uh, polarizing nature of Fred Van Vliet on the internet, but it got a little grim by the end, and very much either Fred's incredible or Fred's the worst thing that ever happened to the Toronto Raptors, obviously somewhere in between probably more close to the Fred's awesome end of the spectrum, considering all he did for the franchise. But, uh, you know, I also don't think you could have matched what the Rockets offered him either. Right. So it's a bit of a, a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction to Fred walking for nothing? Did you feel like this was a big sort of misstep by the front office? Is just, just the way she goes when, you know, free agency is a thing. Like what, where, where, where's your sort of head at as Fred walked to Houston? So uh, a couple of steps there, you know, step one is we're a big Fred household. Uh, my, my fiance, Diana is a huge Fred fan. It was heartbreak. It was heartbreak in the household just due to personal feelings and emotion <laughs> and love for Fred. Uh, people were too harsh on Fred. I mean, like Fred's forever a, a legend. Like you have to appreciate what he has done for the franchise, but it's also just like them's the breaks. It is what it is. Cause there was no sane scenario where we match that amount of money. Like mm -hmm, that's truly mm -hmm. chaotic. There is, there's no one who would match that amount of money for Fred. And I love Fred, but like, it doesn't work in any way. If he wants that money, if he wants that bag, he had to go to the Rockets. That was the only living option for him to get that type of thing now mm -hmm. one thing though in terms of like the finance of it that i actually do find kind of surprising and one thing that i feel like not enough people talk about when it comes to uh the finances of of, of playing ball is that like a lot of the times when you see players kind of go to low tax or no tax states to play mm -hmm. and you're like okay they're kind of getting a pay bump because they're not paying as much taxes for home games when they're in florida uh, and I know that, you know, sometimes finances for uh, how this all goes can make people go cross-eyed and it can be <laughs> boring. So bear with me. I'm not even the big finance guy. But one thing that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about with playing in Toronto that should mm. be more appealing and more lucrative to drawing in talent 
is the amount of national ad campaigns that you get from being the only team in Canada. Like, mm -hmm. There is no scenario in which Fred is making the ad dollar in Houston that he was mm -hmm. making in Toronto. And I feel like that's like also kind of like a thing no one talks about, but I'm like, that's a bit of a paid, a paid downgrade there he's, he's not getting that jiff peanut butter money down there man Ex exactly <laughs> exactly Ex but it was like he had a he was making ads between every friggin' game and even <laughs> when you look at our team it's like boucher has like four national ad campaigns it's like what other team does a a seventh eighth man off the bench have four national ad campaigns? Like mm -hmm. I was watching like the local feed for like a Dallas game last season, and Luca was doing an ad for like a local Honda dealership, like not <laughs> even a national ad. It was Luca being like Dave's Hondas. You come down off Highway Forty One. It's the third <laughs> left. He gave directions, Sean. And I'm like, this is Luka Doncic. He's giving directions to Dave's Honda. And Chris Boucher is doing Puma, Slim Jim, Mary Brown's, three bank ads. So I'm like, there's got to be a nice pay bump for that. But obviously that differential couldn't compensate it for Fred. But it's something that mm -hmm. I feel like more NBA coverage when they're talking finances should bring up about playing in Toronto. Uh, but I'm I feel happy like for Fred that he secured that money, you know? I feel like any like negotiation with a free agent, like think back to like 2016 is the summer or is it 2015? LaMarcus Aldridge is a free agent. The Raptors get their meeting with LaMarcus Aldridge. It's big news. Uh, do they sign LaMarcus Aldridge if like the head of A&W Canada is there to pitch the Aldridge burger or something like that? Who's right. to say? We'll never know. But I, I think this is uh, maybe untapped ground that the Raptors brass should be looking at. Um, Let's uh, cheer me up. Uh, so I, I look. It's gonna be okay, I, Sean. Sean like it's I not, said, it's not your fault. It's not your right. fault. You're right. Thank it's you. not your fault. Thanks, Robin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I think for me, I I just I want to watch good basketball. I don't care about championship basketball necessarily i think that's like an unrealistic thing to to want to see every single year you're setting yourself up for massive disappointment if you're like we're a championship or bust this year don't do that you're it's just a nightmarish way i'm not here to tell anyone how to be a fan except for in that specific regard don't be title or bust it sucks but i also think like there should be a level of good that you're shooting for each year uh, and I think the Raptors over the last 10 years have successfully done that, right? Like, they're like, okay, we're maybe not a championship team, but we're going to see what happens. And then we'll pivot from the success we've had into more success and kind of layer success on top of success. And I am concerned that that trend is maybe in a little bit of trouble with the way the roster has been built. There's no point guard play on this team. There's not a whole lot of shooting. The fit around Scotty Barnes, if you're trying to develop him into whatever Scotty Barnes is going to be, is very imperfect. There, there are lineups where it can work for sure, but the starting lineup, for example, is going to be cramped. There's not going to be a ton of space. There's not going to be a ton of shot creation. And this all leads me to think, this will be an interesting team at times, a pretty fun team, but not necessarily a good team. Do you have a different view on this or, you know, is there a way you can kind of cheer me up, make me a little more excited to watch something that's merely okay and not good? Well, I, okay. I, I, I hear and agree with a lot of these complaints that like, it is a concern. What is the makeup, you know, uh, who, you know, in, in terms of like, what does the pick and roll look like if we don't have a shooting option if you can't pick and pop like what it, like we need better shooting mm -hmm. i think that there are a few things to, interesting to kind of look at here and it is that we have a, a lot of people who are going to be playing with heart like whether or not it is good textbook basketball there's no concern for me looking at this lineup where i'm like yeah we definitely got four or five people who are going to show up and really not care and drop some <laughs> thinkers I'm like, no, like if it doesn't work, I'm like, we're going to see some people beating themselves up on the bench. And I think mm. really trying to make it work. So I think heart is one thing where it's like, I like seeing that in basketball, even if it's an iffy game or even if a team is struggling, I want to see mm -hmm. them try to figure it out. And I think there's a beauty in seeing the pieces come together as well. 
So I'm I'm interested to see a lot of these players who care. Also, I think that like American coverage has affected us and what we've mm. been for the past decade of an underestimated team, we have now self-imposed as well. Mm. Like if I if I could like men in black flashy thing, your memory, Sean. And I was like, <laughs> here is an NBA team. I'm not gonna mention the players, but this season there is an NBA team with an all-star, an all-defensive, and a rookie of the year. Mm. as three and maybe one of the most underrated centers in the league, you know, like without getting into advanced analytics, if I was like, what do you think that team is? I think anyone in their right mind is like, that's an above 500 team. Like that's a Mm -hmm. winning team. And I think we will be a winning team. Will it be clumsy and weird and awkward and (laughs) wild growing pains for sure? I think we might have a strong start to the season because None of our plays will make any sense at all, and teams won't necessarily have a I'm defensive I'm so excited for Darko for Ball. I have no idea what Darko Ball is going to look like, but I'm very excited for it, and that's all I know. And that's what I'm wildly excited about, to be mm-hmm. like, well, how, you know, you being like, well, what's the makeup of this team? Be like, that's Darko's problem. I don't know. Like, <laughs> let's see what Darko has to bring to the table. So I think there's a lot of stuff like that where, like, I'm kind of excited. The weird stuff is what I'm excited for. Like, I'm ready for weird ball. And and I think there is something to the idea of, like, the team's not been in this sort of state of unpredictability and flux in a very long time. And there's actually, like, kind of, like, a refreshing bit of, oh, like, we can't just predict they're going to one-up their win total from last year and be better and everything's going to be fine type of thing, right? And I think that is kind of an interesting place to be as a fan. Good place? We'll have to see. But I, I think interesting, absolutely. And interesting can be fun. Speaking of fun, Andrew, it's time now to run you through the gauntlet. That is that random Raptors game. It is, of course, a game that I've played on this podcast many, many times over the years. Listeners of this podcast will know all about it, but you are uninitiated. So here are the rules. I pick a random game from Toronto Raptors history, and you have to tell me which players played in that game for the Toronto Raptors. You will get three strikes in a standard version of this game. However... I'm granting you a fourth strike in this one because the game I've chosen features 12 different Raptors suiting up. All the dressed players got into the game. And so we will uh, grant you that one extra strike because I am a very, very nice dictator. Um, Basically, you're going to run through. uh, You'll say the player's name. I'll dig into their stat line and any sort of fun quirks from the box score. We'll go one at a time all the way through. If you get all 12 players without getting to four strikes, you win the game and get to go and brag to your friends and family about it. If you don't, I win the game and I get to go and brag to my friends and family about having done basically nothing. Uh, We will do a game from the 2017-18 Toronto Raptors season, an extremely fun year in which the Raptors won 59 games, had a glorious run through the regular season, can't remember what happened in the playoffs, but I can't imagine it was anything important or notable or good. I don't even think LeBron James was there. beautiful regular season. It was a beautiful (laughs) season. Don't even worry about it. It was no other superstars on other teams. There is no (laughs) postseason. (laughs) It was a total, total delight of a season. And so we've chosen one game from that year. A year year that you told me before coming on the podcast was your favorite Raptors season of all time. I've chosen a game from March the 7th, 2018. You might remember this one, a 121-119 overtime victory over the Detroit Pistons. Pre-Dwayne Casey curse. Of course, Dwayne Casey still coaching the Raptors at this time. This is the game in which DeMar DeRozan dunks on Anthony Tolliver's head going coast to coast and brings down the rim, ends Anthony Tolliver's career as we knew it. Also, this game features uh, DeMar DeRozan setting up a different player. I've already given you one of the players. I'm an idiot. I was just about Uh, to say, it was... (laughs) It was a safety pick anyway. There you, you know, go. I don't feel been, so yeah. bad. I'm not going to say the player he set up for a massive game-winning shot. You'll have to figure that out on your own. Uh, but yeah, DeMar DeRozan played in this game. I'm taking away your third strike, or your fourth strike. You get three strikes now. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
DeMar DeRozan. I blew it. I blew it. DeMar in this game, 43 minutes, 42 points, six assists, four boards. He shot 16 of 28 and, of course, ended Anthony Tolliver's life, as we know. 11 other players played in this game for the Toronto Raptors. I will give you that fourth strike. It's not your fault that I said a name. That's that's on me. Uh, so you just get a, a leg up here. That's fine. The asterisk will be an extra game if you win, but that's you have to sleep with that at night. It's not my problem. Um, so... Take it away, Andrew. Let's run through the uh, various players from this game that played for the Raptors. Uh, give me uh, your first guess as to uh, who we had on the court for the Raptors in this one. Well, if we're going back and forth, why don't we just say you went first and said DeMar. We can just get that one out of the way. We'll say the Sean pick. <laughs> you grabbed DeMar right off the top, and now it's over to me. We'll say Kyle. Yes. Perfect. Yes, Kyle Lowry played in this game. 41 minutes, 15 points, 7 boards, 15 assists in this one as well. 4 steals, and of course, he led the team in plus-minus at a plus-13. Not shocking anybody there. Uh, what's your next pick? Uh, all right. Oh, okay. We're, I'm just going straight. Okay. I thought we were going back. I, I mean, next pick. Well, I'm looking I'm at the go. box score. You don't want to go up against me, because I'm just going to read the names off the box score if it goes that way. So. Uh. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to read it. Well, in that case, Jonas. <laughs> Jonas Valanciunas is correct. He played 31 Jonas minutes. Yes. 14 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, 3 blocks as well. Uh, was a minus 1. Shot 6 of 14 from the field. You're, you got 2. You got no strikes. Who you got next? Uh, OG. OG Ananobi did not play in this game. Uh, I'm assuming due to injury? Uh, uh, yeah, he... Injury. That's tough. That's a tough one because, yeah, he, uh, that's just the way the game goes, man. I guess that extra strike is very useful for you. Um, but yeah, no OG in this one. Yeah. He yeah, uh, yeah. was unavailable. And you know what? I was like, I was like, I'm going to go OG a little bit early. I knew that there was an injury possibility with that as I brought it up. <laughs> I was like, wait, you know what? But I was like, no, I don't, maybe he wasn't. But no, I was correct that he, I, yeah, should have followed my instinct there. Let's go to Surge then. Serge Baca is correct. He played 12 minutes, started this game, but only played 12 minutes. Not exactly in uh, Dwayne Casey's good graces in this one. Two of eight from the field, four points, right. two rebounds. You have one strike. You got three correct. Okay. Uh, we can go with uh, Pascal. Pascal Siakam, yep. 28 minutes off the bench, eight points, six boards, four assists, a steal and a block, three of five shooting, one of two from deep, and a plus one. You have four correct, one strike, and uh, six players left to pick. All right, and then uh, Fred. Fred Van Vliet, yep, he came off the bench. He played 25 minutes, 2 of 10, 6 points, 5 boards, 2 assists, and of course, hit that game-winning shot off the pass from DeMar DeRozan. Foot on the line, wasn't a 3. I've always envisioned that as a 3. I watched it back before coming on here. Was not a 3. Oh. Sorry to break everyone's bubble, but uh, it was a long 2. It was a P.J. Tucker 2. We love those and uh, won them the game. So, shout-out to Fred, and uh, shout-out to you. you got 5 correct now. You've got uh, 1 strike. You've got... Five, six guys left to pick. Five guys left to pick. I mean, what are we? Yeah, at? I'm gonna yeah. go full. I'm gonna go full bench mob. Like, let's run quick with like uh, Delon, CJ, Norm. Ooh, yep, all three correct. Norm Powell, 28 minutes, seven to 12. Uh, he started this game in place of OG Ananobi. Uh, 17 points, ah, four rebounds, okay. a plus 12. Yes, uh, a good one from Norm. Delon Wright, you mentioned. Did you say Delon? I did say Delon. Delon and yes. CJ. Yeah. DeLon played just seven minutes in this game. No points, three rebounds, 0 for 1. Always and, oh, and forever. Play DeLon right more minutes, please. Uh, and then CJ Miles, 22 minutes, two of eight from the field, eight points, three boards, an assist steal, a plus six, and uh, two of seven from deep. So you have now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players. Uh, you got three guys left. You got one strike. You're, you're looking in good shape here, Andrew. Uh, okay. Did I, uh, say yak? I you did not already say yak. yak. You did not say yak. Are you saying yak? Okay, now? Well, there we go. There you I'm go. I'm saying it right now. Excellent. Yak of Pirtle. 18 minutes, four points, two boards, one assist, two of five from the field and a plus two. Yak of Pirtle. You got two guys left now, three strikes to work with. I will tell you, you're into the slop now. You're into the back end oh, of roster boy. dudes. Think of well, like this said, is remembering guys at its peak. Who you when got? When you said that it was twelve people, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, so we got starters, bench mob, and two <laughs> randos. Moose <laughs> was Moose playing that that year? 
Greg Monroe, Monroe, a great guess, but no, he was not in this game. Uh, Okay. I believe he was signed. He was on the championship team, was he not? Then he got let go at the deadline as part of the like the moving and shaking to duck the tax and maybe do some salary cap illegalities. Uh, But yeah, no Greg Monroe in this game. That is your second strike. You got two guys left. I'll even tell you, you got a wing and a big. A wing and a big. Oh my god, a wing and a big. And big wise, I already went Jonas, Yak, and Surge. I didn't miss the three Mm -hmm. main. Okay. I can't remember the deepest bench big. I can't do it. I don't. I You're don't. gonna be really mad because I'm gonna tell you, and it's one of the more memorable guys. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. Okay, lay it on me. I'm gonna. I'm. I need you to help me out here because I got. Nothing. Are you invoking a strike right now? Are you, are you just are you asking a strike to be added to your chart to your list? Okay. L and walk away. Wow. Well, okay. Look, we've got three strikes to work with here. Just say some names. Hmm. Just, just. I, I want to give you the opportunity to like the have the joy of accidentally guessing it correctly. Think of Raptors bigs from this time. Think of Raptors wings from this time. Dudes who, you know, garbage time heroes, if you will. Um, I, I feel like I know it's in you, man. <laughs> um, I. This is the sound that I always yearn for when I put Uh, this game together. Miller? Malcolm Miller is correct. Wow. Incredible. Four and a half minutes played, two points, one of two from the field. But Malcolm Miller is one of the two players. You got one guy left, three strikes to work with. You're killing it. This is one of the best performances we've ever seen, frankly. Would hate to see it all come crashing down. But now you got to get this last one. I, I, oh, I've got, I've got better hopes of dunking myself than getting this last one. <laughs> Can I give you a hint? I'll give uh, you a please. hint. Please. Yeah. Um, a couple seasons prior, this guy was extremely good in a game against the undefeated Golden State Warriors. Outside of Kyle Lowry, he might have been their second best player in this game. And he was a big. He was a big, a very big, if you will. I just got to eat it. I just got to eat it. We're going to see me floundering for, we, this isn't, the, no one wants to see this. No one wants no, to no, see no. me flounder this, this is, hard. I want to see this. This is great. I like to watch the guests squirm. Uh, no, okay. I feel bad. You got three strikes to work with and you're packing it in. It's uh. It's a shame. If you're sure, in, though, in my I head, th- I've 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 literally listed the roster that I can think of. <laughs> like it's not like it's not like there's another one in my head where I'm like maybe that, but it's wrong. Don't say it. I'm like that's the roster. Okay, I'll give you one last hint. Uh-huh. This might not resonate because I know you mentioned you kind of st- got back on the Raptors bandwagon in 2015-16. Yeah, but. This guy is famous for a very fun draft night photo in a hat that maybe was a little ill-fitting. <sighs> I will be what's, clipping that that groan uh, and using it. What's when the messed up is lose. that I can see this photo and I still mm-hmm. don't have it. I can like in my mind's eye, this photo does exist. It's somewhere <laughs> in. Like it's in the trash br- trash bin of my mm-hmm. mind's folders, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to like send it back, and my brain computer is like that folder doesn't exist anymore <laughs> to send it back to, so you can't undo the delete key, you can't undo <sighs> it. It's a yeah, shame. Full, full fold. I, He's I folding. apologize. I, House wins. We've all acknowledged this. A very valiant effort. You did a damn good job here, Andrew. But the last guy you missed out, who kept you from glory, is none other. Then Lucas Bebe Noguera, who uh, played three minutes in this game, one point, didn't attempt a shot. Uh... <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Do you have okay. any fond recollections of Bebe? I do not. Wow. I do not. <laughs> See, I was uh, a little little Bebe sicko um, just because he was fun and clearly didn't really know how to play basketball. Uh, and I, I appreciated that he did made the NBA without having that ability or knowledge. That was great. Um, but a damn shame. Sure, that, sure. Uh, he, he, he <laughs> Damn shame it didn't uh, I, come lo- through for you here. 
I'm now looking at the hat photo and I'm like, ah, yes. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, Andrew, yeah. that brings us to the end of this episode. It's a shame to leave off on a, on a sour note with you coming just short of winning that random Raptors game, but we absolutely loved having you on the show. It was a delight to, to, to chat with you and you passed the test, man. You'll be back on when the, when the real games start, you, you you're, you're March worthy. You're April worthy. Let's go baby. Before we hey, let John, you go. I, I love yeah. you coming. I love you coming at me this episode as well. Being like, cheer me up. Let's get optimistic. And he blew it. Well, anyways, thanks for coming by Andrew. Like you, you come, you knew, you oh. knew I wasn't getting, that you knew i wasn't getting lucas God, oh man. you know what man i kill kill it's hope oh, killing the vibes i'm frankly disappointed now that i'm thinking about it 2017 18 your favorite season and you can remember this lucas noguera pretty nondescript season where he didn't do a whole lot and never played in the league I again mean, after it how dare you up again <laughs> Andrew, uh, before we let you go, you got stuff to plug. You not only have like your comedy and your podcast and all that stuff, but you also have a pretty awesome thing that you're doing. Uh, please tell the people all about that awesome thing you're doing starting this weekend. Uh, certainly. Uh, this uh, this weekend, I am going on uh, what is called the Friends for Life, Life Bike Rally. It is a, uh, a bike ride from Toronto to Montreal. It's a little over 600 kilometers, a little over 300 miles. Uh, and it's all raising money for charity. So if you if you have any money to give, if you want to give money to a good cause uh, to, to support me uh, going on this ride. And there's a bunch of other people doing it, but my fundraising page is at bike.andrewivamy.com. That's bike dot andrew i v i m e y dot com if you have uh anything uh you know in your pockets or a budget to to support a good cause and a good ride i appreciate it this is going to be a uh oh it's uh that's a long one rest in peace to uh <laughs> my my butt and taint uh so that's gonna be a long <laughs> tough one uh, but if you don't have uh, anything in your in your money uh, in your budget or wallet to to give you can also check out some of my stuff for free if uh our listeners, if you're a nerdy person, I also host a podcast called Talk from Superheroes, uh, where every week myself and my co-host, who's my fiance Diana, we uh, talk about a superhero television show or, or film, and uh, we have a great time doing it. So if you're into nerdy stuff, you can search Talk from Superheroes wherever you're listening to this right now, if you're listening to this in podcast form, or you can go to fromsuperheroes.com to, to find the podcast and everything we do. Amazing, man. Uh, if you get a chance to see Andrew do comedy near you as well, be sure to go do that. Andrew's great. He's hilarious. We really appreciate it coming on the show, man. Uh, the link for Andrew's bike ride is in the description of the podcast. So if you want to chip a few shekels his way, uh, it's right there. So you don't have to go far. Just click on the link. And uh, that's going to do it. We will leave it there. Andrew, uh, again, we'll have you back on the show. You've earned it, man. Uh, and my like lambasting of you at the end makes me feel bad, almost to the point where I have to bring you back. You want to be a co-host? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I run this. I'm the producer of this podcast now. I don't Congratulations, know. Congratulations, man. This is my it's show now. Hard earned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, we'll have you back on. It was a lovely, lovely treat to have you on the show. Thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks for being here with us all week long. We'll be back again next week as we will, uh, you know, navigate our way throughout the rest of August. We'll probably have some Canada basketball talk next week as we'll try to get one of our folks covering Canada basketball going into the World Cup on the show uh, and all sorts of other good stuff i think our pal james herbert's gonna stop by so keep an eye out and uh thanks so much for making locked on raptors your first listen every day thank you for hanging and we'll talk to you again on monday or tuesday i'll let you know in the in the discord join the discord by the way the links in the description we'll talk to you then Bye bye